Have you ever wanted your snare drum to sound like this, guys? Well, today, I'm gonna to show you how. Welcome guys, something a little different today. Uh, up until now, I've mostly posted videos of me playing the drums, but over the last couple of weeks, I've been putting out a lot more content, focused more on tuning and sort of tone chasing, and it's gone really well. And a lot of people had a lot of questions about you know, how they might go about um, tuning their drums or setting up their drums for certain sounds off of some iconic records or from drummers that they like. And it got me thinking like this could make for a really good series um, and be an educational thing, not just for me, but for you guys as well. And I wanted to start today by going over a drum sound that I think a lot of people have been really interested in over the last few years. I think, you know, it's, it's pretty fair to say that one of the most iconic snare drum tones of the last couple of years comes from two from Sleep Token. It's really cool to hear a drummer, you know, playing in a very almost like jazz fusion style in amongst what can be really heavy music, but what can also be really beautiful music too. And his snare drum tone is very much the cornerstone of this. You know, he's going for this really like high and punchy kind of sound, but without it being like too bright in my opinion. I think it's a really great drum tone. Something that when I first listened to Sleep Token was very unique about the band. Now I wanna show you guys a little bit of insight into my process and how I would go about this. Um, it's a pretty nerdy topic, uh, but let's do it. Let's dive in. So I've got a Cubase session already set up here. And basically what I've done is I've picked a track um, that I think encompasses what this snare drum tone is really about and gives us an opportunity to hear it in a few different environments. And as well as that, I've got a drums only version of it. I've used uh, Moises to, to pull out the drums, which we'll have a listen to in a second, just to kind of isolate and it'll, it'll help us sort of figure out the fundamental frequencies of the drum a little bit better than in amongst with the whole mix. And finally a drumless version, which we'll use uh, a bit later once we've actually like set up a drum and we've got it sounding the way we want. We can use this to kind of AB how close we've got. So let's just have a quick listen to the front of this song. Now, in my opinion, one of the best ways to figure out like the note of a drum is to pull it into something like this, pull up an EQ, grab one of my little EQ bands, and I'm gonna sweep across the lower part of the snare drum range, somewhere from 200 to 300 probably. Usually the note itself is somewhere in that range. I'm gonna turn on this EQ band. So there's a few. In here around here, there's like a really solid 267 seems to be the spot for me. So now that we know what the fundamental frequency of the drum is tuned to, we can then come over and check out this table, which is going to tell us what note is closest to that. And you can see here that the closest number that we can get is this 261, um, which is a C note in the fourth octave. So it's like a, a slightly sharp C, sort of somewhere between a C and a C sharp. So now that we know what range we're gonna be tuning our drum to, we need to think about what drum is gonna be most appropriate for that tuning range. Now, a fundamental note of 267 is pretty high. And I also know from a bit of research that Two likes to use a 13 by seven PA Love Tone Red Gum. PA Love Tone are an awesome Australian company, you should check them out. It's essentially just one big block of red gum, which is pretty rad. Uh, I don't have a drum like that, but what I'm gonna do is use a drum that I'm borrowing from a good friend and co-teacher here at the Backbeat Academy, Mr. Kyle Samble, which is a 13 by seven pork pie, zebra wood, and rosewood. Now that's just the, what the model's called. It's actually just a maple snare drum. And the other thing to note is that this drum is fitted with a Remo P77 snare head, which honestly, like this is a huge part of two's tone. We're gonna tune this sucker up and we're gonna see how much we have to crank it to get it up there. Let's do it. Okay, so over here on the snare now, everything's basically completely wound down to nothing. Everything's really slack. Um, I'm just going through now and making sure that the lugs are all in a nice finger tight spot to start with so that they're all relatively even. So with bottom snares on 14 inch drums, I like to shoot for like a 400 Hertz sort of around that area. With this drum, because it's a 13 inch drum, I'm gonna start with 400 and I might actually go up a little bit. I find that 400 on a 13 inch drum is maybe just a little too low. You don't get quite as much sensitivity out of the wires. Um, and because two plays a lot of like really articulate stuff, I would imagine his snare tone would, he would want that to have that articulation. So we're gonna start by cranking this up a fair bit. Now I am shooting for a number here. Um, 
I'm shooting for about 416 hertz, uh, which is, I believe, around a G sharp. Cool. We're basically 416 across the board here. So we'll, we'll switch around. Top head. This is going up. This is going up big. I've already finger tighted it. So we can just dive straight in. Start cranking this sucker up. Fundamental is around 229. So remembering that we're, we're shooting for that 267. That's very high. So we're gonna have to keep cranking this sucker. We're at a 395 on the top, as far as the lug pitch is concerned. And we're still not there. We're like 248 fundamental. Oh my God, this is making me nervous cracking it this high. 267. Oh my God. Wow, this is really bitey and feels very reminiscent of his live sound. Woo. It's pretty sharp on the ears, I won't lie. I'll chuck this snareway M1 on it and see if we can uh, tone it down a little bit. Oh. Wow, it's good. It's really good. It has a lot of high concussive kind of whack to it. Here in the room, it really it really hits the ear like quite hard. Um, it's cool. I really like it. It's, it's a very solid feeling sound. I'm going to check the bottom head now that we've done all this to the top head. I want to see like if we've changed the tension on the bottom. So I've just checked the bottom head again after we've cranked the top head and um, it's actually come up in tuning, which is not uncommon. You're creating more tension across the lugs and the shell, everything's sort of raising together. I feel pretty good that that's now resting around that 416 um, lug frequency. Let's see what that's done for this. Yeah, that's actually brought back a lot of that low end that I was sort of wishing for. Let's hit record on it and have a little bit of a look in Cubase and sort of see where we're at. Okay, so we're back over on the computer now. Let's uh, just do a quick comparison to what we just recorded. So here's the original. With the drummers. definitely a little bit more room tone, a little bit more explosive kind of reverb going on in the actual mix. But I think we've actually done a pretty good job just for sort of throwing it together and getting the tuning right. So honestly, I'm pretty impressed with this drum. I think it took the tuning range really well. Um, and I think we've actually managed to get pretty close to two's tone here. Now, obviously if we had the exact same drum, we'd probably be able to get a little closer again. Um, but you know, no two drums are, are perfectly alike. And I, I think I wanted to showcase in this video that, you know, you don't have to have the exact same gear. You don't even necessarily have to have expensive gear. Like this is a, a nice snare, but it's just a Keller shell snare drum. It's nothing crazy. You can buy drums like this all over the place. I think we'll call this a success. Um, let's go over to the kit and let's see what it sounds like in context, shall we?